All right, so what I'm gonna be going through is a peppered mock simulation. So this will go along with your worksheet on Google Classroom um, or for those of you that I put this on Edpuzzle. So we're gonna talk about peppered moths, natural selection in black and white. Those of you that have your own laptops, you can go through this website yourself. If you're on a tablet or you're watching this on your phone, you can watch as I go through uh, all parts of this website. So first we're going to review the life cycle of the peppered moth. We'll follow the peppered moth from birth to death all in one year. Peppered moths are common insects living in England, Europe, and the North America. They are small moths, only one and a half to two inches across. Their light wings are peppered with small dark spots. Predators of the peppered moth include flycatchers, nuthatches, and the European robin. Like most moths, peppered moths avoids predators that hunt in daylight by flying at night and resting during the day. Any animal that's sitting still is harder to see than a moving one. Peppered moths have extra camouflage to help hide them. The trees they live in have light colored bark and are covered with small fungi called lichens. The pattern on peppered moths wings looks very similar to the lichens. Peppered moth eggs hatch during midsummer. The larvae, called caterpillars, feed on the leaves of birch, willow, and oak trees. The larvae look much like a small branch. Having a body that looks like a stick helps the larvae hide from the predators. The larvae can even adjust their color from brown to green to best match the branches they're feeding on. Cold weather is difficult for insects. To avoid death, peppered moth larvae change into pupae or cocoons for the winter. In April and May, the pupae open to reveal a new adult moth. These adults will lay eggs and die by the end of the summer. No peppered moth lives for more than one year. While the typical peppered moth is light, some have dark, almost black bodies. These moths are given the name Carbonaria. Others have many more dark spots than the average peppered moth and are called Insularia. In the past, these darker moths were very rare but that changed around 150 years ago. To find out why, click on Impact of Pollution. Pollution and Peppered Moths. R.S. Edelson, Edelson was an English naturalist who studied insects in the 1800s. In 1848, he recorded an unusual discovery in his journal. Today I caught an almost totally black form of Biston betularia, a peppered moth, near the center of Manchester. This is the first recorded sighting of a dark peppered moth. What was rare in 1848 became common over the next 50 years. By 1900, the peppered moth populations in areas around English cities were as much as 98% dark moths. Scientists became curious why this was happening. During that time, England was experiencing what is known as the Industrial Revolution. Factories were being built and they ran by burning coal for fuel. The result was a dark smoke that covered the surrounding countryside. Trees that had been light covered by lichens were now dark and bare. This clearly was having some impact on the moths. Scientists began to try to find out why. Some thought that the adults were changing their colors the same way the larvae could match the color of the twigs. Others thought the chemicals in the smoke darkened the moths. Finally, it was found that the color was genetic. Moths passed their color to the next generation. Eggs from light moths developed, uh, uh, developed into light moths, and dark moth eggs turned into dark adults. The dark color was caused by a mutation in the DNA of a single moth, and the mutated gene had been passed to all of its offspring. This explained why the moths were dark, but not why the dark moths were taking over. Did the dark moths have an advantage in the dark forests? If so, the change in the moths was a result of natural selection. Natural selection was proposed by Charles Darwin to explain how new species evolve. All types of living things have small differences between the individuals of the species. If one of those differences allow the individual to live longer, they will have more offspring. As that trait is passed on, the species starts to look more like the successful individual. Over time, the species changes. In 1896, J.W. Tut suggested that the peppered moths were an example of natural selection. He recognized that the camouflage of the light moth no longer worked in the dark forest. Dark moths live longer in a dark forest, so they had more time to breed. 
All living things respond to natural selection. Over 100 other species of moth were observed to darken over time in polluted forests. Scientists call this effect industrial melanism. Natural selection is still at work in the peppered moth. In the last 50 years, most industrial countries have significantly reduced their pollution. As predicted by the theory, the number of dark moths are dropping as the forests become cleaner. Natural selection in peppered moths has been extensively studied. To find out how, go to Kettlewell's experiments. Dr. Kettlewell tests natural selection. Science requires that theories be tested to see if they are supported by evidence. During the 1950s, Henry, Henry Bernard Davis Kettlewell ran a series of experiments and field studies to find out if natural selection had actually caused the rise of the dark, dark peppered moth. Dr. Kettlewell was an entomologist, a scientist who studies insects. In 1952, he was named a research fellow at Oxford, one of England's premier universities. He spent the rest of his life studying peppered moths and other moths known to turn dark through industrial melanism. Scientists test theories by making predictions based on the theory. They then test the prediction to see if what they observe matches their expectations. Dr. Kettlewell felt that if natural selection caused the change in the moth population, the following must be true. Heavily polluted forests will have mostly dark peppered moths. Clean forests will have mostly light peppered moths. Dark moths resting on dark trees are more likely than light moths to be eaten by birds. The reverse should be true on light trees. Dark moths released into polluted forests would live longer than light moths, but die sooner in clean forests. Amateur entomologists across England helped Dr. Kettlewell map the population of light and dark peppered moths. Their work showed clearly that high populations of dark moths were found near industrial cities producing pollution. In the countryside not darkened by factory soot, the dark moths were rare. Dr. Kettlewell compared this information with studies on the moth done in the past. It was clear that the dark moths were almost completely absent before the Industrial Revolution. Now they were found only where the forests were polluted. To directly study bird predation on the moths, Dr. Kettlewell placed light and dark moths on the trunks of trees where he could observe them. He recorded the times a bird found the moth. He found that on dark tree trunks, birds were twice as likely to eat a light moth as a dark moth. The same birds would find the dark moth twice as often if the bark on the tree was light. This supported the fact that dark moths had a survival advantage in a dark forest. Dr. Kettlewell also tested the idea that dark moths live longer in dark forests. He collected groups of light and dark moths. All captured moths were marked so that they could be identified if recaptured. After marking them, both groups were released into the wild. Two days later, moth traps were used to recapture the moths. In clean forests, twice as many light moths lived to be recaptured as the dark moths. Only half as many light moths were recaptured in the polluted forest. He had experimentally shown that if the moth's color matched the environment, it had a better chance of survival. In 1959, Dr. Kettlewell published an article in Scientific American summarizing his studies of the peppered moth. His years of work made an excellent case for natural selection. Every prediction he made had withstood the test. In a dark forest, the dark peppered moths were shown to have a survival advantage over light moths. Birds were twice as likely to eat a light moth as a dark moth. Rare before factories were built in England, their increase in numbers was shown to be related to pollution. Natural selection was the best explanation for the change in the moth population over time. Watch Natural Selection in Action by going to Bird's Eye View. This simulation allows you to watch Natural Selection in Action. A population of moths will be released in the forest. At the beginning, the pollution is 50% light moths and 50% dark. During the simulation, graphs at the bottom will record any changes in the population. The only factor different between the two types of moth is the color of the wings. Your role in the simulation is that of a predator. Guide the bird with the mouse to the moth. Click on the moth with the mouse to eat the moth. Every time you eat a moth, you will hear the crunch of its exoskeleton. If you miss the moth, you will hear the bird call. Eat as many moths as possible in the minute that you have. 
First, we'll start with the light forest. Your forest started with 50% light moths and 50% dark moths. Now there are 57% light moths and 43% dark moths. Since you could see the dark moths easier, you ate more dark moths than the light moths. All right, so next, we will try the dark forest. I don't see any more moths. Your forest started with 50% light moths and 50% dark moths. Now there are 46% light moths and 54% dark moths. Since you could see the light moths easier, you ate more light moths than dark moths. 